to talk about the odyssey toward woman suffrage. Now, here we are in this lovely, lovely September day in 1920, and we, for the last month, have been celebrating like you would not believe. <laughs> it has been amazing, and I invite you right now to join in that celebration. I will say hip hip, and I think you know what to follow that with. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> hip hip. Hooray! I decided I was going to go out on the campaign trail. My first campaign was in South Dakota. Oh, it was tough, I'm going to tell you that. I got there and waited for my train. It didn't come for hours and hours. Then when it did, it dropped me off at my location where I found a ramshackle post office, a granary, and an outhouse. <laughs> I sat and waited again, and finally a farmer came in a cart and took me to his home where his family gave me dinner of bread, watermelon, and tea. Not an unusual dinner in those hard times out there. My next campaign was in Colorado. We didn't expect much. We talked everywhere. I can, oh, just love telling this story. Uh, one of my big speeches was at the bottom of um, a small mountain, and at the last minute, the uh, ticket seller came and he said, sorry, the train broke down, I'm sorry, but you're not going to be able to give your talk. I was desperate. Thank you all, each and every one of you, for being here today. How important it is for us to get things moving as well as we can within small groups, state groups, and some lobbying on the federal level. We have to do it all, and we cannot do it without friends. Friends in the government, friends in the public sphere, friends like our men who we need with us, shoulder to shoulder, working toward this very, very important, universal human rights movement, woman suffrage. Susan B. Anthony decided that she was going to retire. All the women who had started this were in their, you know, 70s and more. Uh, and Susan had been serving as our president since the time the organizations came together. But now she was going to retire. And amazingly, I became her hand-picked successor. She said, I want you to run. And I'm going to make it known that I want you to win. <laughs> you know, you didn't know, you didn't ever worry what she was thinking about. Because <laughs> she would tell you before you even had the thought. But um, I did win. And when people congratulated me on being her successor, I said, you know, I'm pleased to be elected. But Susan B. Anthony will never have a successor. That. Here we were, two million people, or more or less, I don't know, but more definitely was the case, I think. Uh, we needed something to do when we do get this vote. We can't just disperse. We've worked too long and too hard to move forward, and there was a lot to be done. Women did not really understand all the intricacies of voting. It seemed very normal to someone who'd been doing it for years, but I think it was a little intimidating for some people. And so we would be able to start 
an education program in this League of Women Voters. And I don't have to tell you, you already heard it said today, but the fact is we are a nonpartisan group. We are political, but we are not partisan. And we do not support any particular candidate. And, but if you join, you are free to join the party of your choice and to vote as you wish. You must keep that in mind. One more time, folks. Let's give it a go. Hip, hip, hooray! And thank you for having me come here.